How's it going, my peeps? It is now time for the Battleground 2014 results slash highlights and review video. I'll go over the results, some of the highlights of my opinion, and give you guys my thoughts, my review on the show. So it kicks off, of course, with the kickoff, where the kickoff panel this time was Renee Young, Booker T, Christian, and Alex Riley, which I believe was the same kickoff panel as Money in the Bank. And uh, they go over some of the matches and uh, give their predictions, and then we get Adam Rose versus Fandango in a one-on-one -on -one match, and Layla and Summer Rae come out with Adam Rose. Commentators go over how it's Adam Rose's birthday, and match match was really short. Uh, you basically, Layla and Summer Rae were trying to distract Fandango on the outside of the ring with the Rose Buds by dancing all around ringside. And Fandango doesn't like that, so he gets out of the ring and he tells Summer, Summer Rae and Layla, what are you doing? And he starts yelling at them and then Layla slaps him on one cheek and then Summer Rae slaps him on the other cheek. And then Adam Rose gets out of the ring, he puts Fandango back in the ring, he hits like a running elbow on him and then hits a splash in the corner and follows that up with the party foul. His finisher on Fandango covers him and wins the match. The panel then goes over some other matches on the card. And they show a video package for the Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose match. And then we get an interview with the Usos about their 2 out of 3 falls match against the Wyatts. And Jimmy Uso says that all that means is that he's going to get one fall and Jay's going to get the other fall because they share. And then Jay Uso says, and you know, this time referee can make the same mistake again where he, you know, mistakes the uh, legal twin in the ring for the illegal one or whatever. And he says it's because, you know, everybody knows I'm the better looking twin anyways. And then Jimmy Uso looks at him like, what? Who said that? And then after that, we get Cameron versus Naomi. Cameron makes her entrance first and then Naomi. Uh, Naomi, when she's getting close to the ring, she decides to charge the ring and go right after Cameron. But Cameron cowers away and goes behind the referee and the referee separates them and kind of stops Naomi from going after Cameron uh, before the before the bell rings. So he rings the bell, uh, right away they start fighting, and then when it comes to the end of the match, Naomi had Cameron in her hands, but Cameron uh, slipped out of it and she pushed Naomi like neck first onto the ropes, and then she rolls her up, grabs the tights, gets the three count, and wins the match. After the match, Naomi's like complaining to the referee that, you know, Cameron grabbed the tights when she was pinning her, but the decision is final, so Cameron wins the match. And then after that, it was pretty much over for the um, for the kickoff. They show a video package for the main event, and then they move on to the main show. And man, the first match to kick off the main show was freaking awesome. It was the Usos versus the Wyatt family, and I'd have to say this is their best match yet. Um, there was a bunch of highlights in the match, but first off, I'm gonna go over you know the first. Actually, no, I'm gonna go over the highlights first. Uh, you had. A double suplex from Rowan. Uh, Rowan actually double suplexing both the Usos from the top turnbuckle to the second turnbuckle. They're, well, the Usos were on the top turnbuckle and Rowan was on the second turnbuckle. So that was a pretty cool superplex. You also had Jimmy jumping all over the place at some point. He jumps, hits the crossbody from inside of the ring to the outside onto Luke Harper and then Eric Rowan too. And then he climbs up the barricade, runs up the barricade and jumps onto Luke Harper. Yeah, Luke Harper, he hits a suicide dive first on, I think it was Jimmy Uso, and then he tries it on Jey Uso, but in a pretty cool spot, you had Jey Uso interrupting him or stopping the suicide suicide dive with a super kick. That was the first time I think we saw somebody stop a suicide dive with a super kick. We've seen it stop with, you know, a punch or an elbow, but a super kick, I think that was the first time. Also, in another shocker, another surprise... Uh, I think it was Jey Uso, yeah, it was Jey Uso, Jey Uso hits the, the splash from the top turnbuckle on Eric Rowan, and Eric Rowan actually kicked out, I was surprised at that, I actually thought they were gonna get, you know, the victory here, and even on commentary, I think Michael Cole mentioned that nobody's kicked out of the top rope splash, so that was a pretty cool surprise, and speaking of kicking out, also Luke Harper hit the discus clothesline, uh, and although... Uh, the Uso didn't kick out. I think Jey Uso interrupted the pin. Um, so that was another close call there. Now, as far as who got the first, second fall, and third fall, first fall is actually another surprise where Jimmy Uso got tagged in. Jey Uso tags in Jimmy. Jimmy jumps over or springboards over Luke Harper, and then he bounces off the ropes. Once he comes back from the ropes, he gets hit with a big boot out of nowhere from Luke Harper. Harper covers him and gets the first fall. I actually didn't expect... Uh, Harper to get that, you know, that first fall with the big boots, and then after that, uh, Luke Harper, I think, um, 
Oh yeah, Luke Harper tried to go for a back suplex on Jimmy Uso. Jimmy Uso the back flipped out of it. And then he tagged in Jey Uso without Luke Harper seeing. So Luke Harper instead charges uh, Jimmy Uso uh, towards the turnbuckle. Jimmy Uso gets out of the way. So Harper hits the turnbuckle. And then Jey Uso rolls up Luke Harper for the three counts. So first fall goes to the Wyatts. Second fall went to the Usos. And then for the third fall... The Usos double super kicked Luke Harper, who was the legal man, and then they s double super kicked Eric Rowan, who tried to get inside the ring. He was on the apron, got double super kicked as well. And then they went up the top turnbuckle, both of them on the same top turnbuckle, and hit a double splash on Luke Harper for the three counts. And so the Usos win after a great match, but the crowd actually booed the Usos once the Usos climbed up the top turnbuckle, like both of them for the double splash. I guess the crowd wanted to see the Y family walk away with the win here. And then after the match, we get an interview with Seth Rollins, where he talks about what he's going to do to Dean Ambrose tonight. And then out of nowhere, Dean Ambrose attacks him. Uh, he grabs Seth Rollins' head and, like, smashes it against a couple boxes. And then referees and agents and all that, they stop Ambrose or, like, they separate them. And Ambrose keeps trying to, you know, attack Seth Rollins. And then Triple H comes in. And he tells security uh, to actually escort Ambrose out of the arena, and he doesn't want to see him for the rest of the night. So that came as a surprise, because now, because that match was supposed to be next, but Triple H, you know, uh, told security to escort Ambrose out of the arena, and he was yelling at him, you know, he's not gonna ruin uh, the, the, our plans tonight, or he's not gonna ruin this. So, anyways, after that, we see Michael Cole, JBL, and Jerry the King Lawler, you know, wondering what's going to happen next, because, you know, the, the match was supposed to be next, but now Ambrose got escorted out of the arena. So instead, Paige's music hits, and we get Paige versus AJ for the Divas Championship. And in this match, Paige dominated most of the match. She was really aggressive in the match, kind of wrestling more so like a heel, and kind of like, you know, when AJ returned and she faced off against Paige. And throughout the match, whenever Paige would, you know, hit an offensive maneuver or something like that, and then she'd cover AJ and AJ would kick out, she'd get frustrated and she'd look disappointed. And she looked like she's trying to, you know, remain calm, but she wasn't really remaining calm. She hits a, um, turnbuckle, a sunset flip powerbomb from the top, turnbuckle on AJ, AJ kicks out of that too, she tried to hit like a spear from in between the apron like Big E does, but it was kind of sloppy and it was pretty much a botch, because it, it just wasn't executed as smooth as when Big E does it, so anyways, she does that and they fall, you know, to the outside, and then once they're back in the ring, eventually AJ counters one of Paige's moves. She locks in the Black Widow, and at that point, I'm wondering if Paige is tapping out or not, but actually Paige counters that into the Paige Turner, and it was a much better counter than when she made her debut on Raw and countered the Black Widow into the Paige Turner, and it, it didn't look that impactful. This one looked a lot better. Uh, but AJ actually kicked out. I thought that Paige might have gotten, you know, the pinfall there, or the pin, but, yeah, AJ won. I mean, AJ. Well, AJ did win. But uh, she kicked out of that. And then she rolled up Paige. Although, the roll-up was also kind of botched. And then Paige turned the roll-up into a roll-up of her own. And then Paige... I mean, AJ kicked out. And then AJ, out of nowhere, hits a running Shining Wizard. Covers Paige. And wins the match. Afterwards, we see Randy backstage in like some area Kane usually hangs out in. And he's looking for Kane, and then Kane's behind him. And Randy basically tells him that he was wrong about what he did on Raw, where he RKO'd Kane. And pretty much he's, you know, he's apologizing. And then he awaits, he waits for Kane to apologize, but Kane tells him, you know, since he is the, the devil's favorite demon, he doesn't apologize. And so Randy says, all right, that's fine. You know, he understands that. But he asks Kane if, you know, they're on the same page and that, you know, tonight they have to ensure that Roman Reigns and Cena don't walk away with the titles or with the title. And Kane tells Randy not to worry because the winner of that match, the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, is standing here right now. And then Kane leaves. And then after that, we get Rusev coming out with Lana. And they cut a promo, you know, uh, they praise Putin and they talk down USA. And then the Real Americans music hits, and Jack Swagger comes out with Zeb Coulter. Uh, they talk a bit before the match, 
meaning Zeb, you know, Zeb Coulter and Lana. Lana slaps Zeb Coulter, and then Swagger and Rusev, they start fighting, and Swagger takes out Rusev, he takes him out of the ring, and then once Rusev gets back in the ring, the match starts, and this was definitely the longest Rusev match yet. Now, of course, all his other matches have been like two minutes or so, except for the Big E match, but this was also longer than the Big E match. I'd say this was about 10 minutes long. So, anyways, uh, Rusev dominated a good portion of the match, but also Swagger got some good offense in, too. He hit his signature moves, he hit the Swagger Bomb. He did not hit the Gut Wrench Power Bomb, though, which, uh, now, because of that, I want to see if he can hit the Gut Wrench Power Bomb on Rusev. And I think we might see that at SummerSlam. But uh, anyways, as far as this match goes, Rusev, actually, it actually looked at some point that Rusev maybe, maybe might tap out. I mean, I still thought Rusev was going to win, but when Swagger locked in the Patriot Lock and then Rusev was approaching the ropes, Swagger then pulled him back towards like the middle of the ring. And at that point, I was like, oh, is Rusev going to tap here? But Rusev actually got out of it. He eventually, you know, grabbed the ropes and Swagger had to break it. Swagger broke it at like the count of four right before getting disqualified. So, well, actually, he, he didn't get disqualified because he stopped it at the count of four. And then Rusev like rolled out uh, to the outside of the ring. And then Swagger followed him and he locked in the Patriot Lock once again on Rusev. And at that point, I was thinking, all right, I can see Rusev tapping out here. So that way, you know, oh, look at this, you know, Rusev taps out, but it doesn't count because he's on the outside of the ring. But actually, Rusev does not tap out even on the outside of the ring where it doesn't count. Instead, he counters the Patriot Lock and sends Swagger uh, towards the Steel Steps. And Swagger hits the Steel Steps face first. And then they're both down. And Rusev eventually, at the count of eight, he gets up. And at the count of nine, he gets back in the ring. And Swagger gets countered out, so Rusev wins via countouts. Uh, after the match, he celebrates, and he's still selling the leg, uh, but uh, Lana tells him to crush Jack Swagger, who's still on the outside, and he's getting checked on by, you know, uh, medics and stuff. So then Rusev gets, uh, goes to the outside, grabs Swagger, puts him back in the ring, and then he stomps on Swagger's back, and this... I noticed some good selling here, because when he stopped on Swagger's back, right away, he, like, sold the leg, like, oh, you know, that hurt. And, <laughs> anyways, then he locked in the accolade on Swagger, and eventually Lana tells him to, you know, to stop, to let go of Swagger, and that's it. He celebrates some more, and, yeah, Rusev wins the match by countout. So, I am definitely expecting a rematch now at SummerSlam, and I like this ending because... It doesn't, like, slow down Swagger's momentum. Because he, he had Rusev, but Rusev kind of, you know, got lucky and, you know, countered it and won via countout. He did not win via submission. So, I'm 100% expecting a rematch now at SummerSlam, which I think that time it will end, you know, via submission. So, after that, we actually get Seth Rollins coming out and he... Uh, basically wants Justin Roberts to announce him as the winner because his opponent irresponsibly got himself escorted out of the building. And basically, yeah, he, he tells Justin Roberts, announce me right now as the winner via forfeit. And so Justin Roberts does just that and announces Seth Rollins as the winner of the match via forfeit. And then Seth Rollins music hits, he celebrates on the top turnbuckle with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Then when he gets out of the ring to leave... All, all of a sudden, you hear, like, the crowd, you know, cheering while the camera is, like, on, you know, Michael Cole, Jerry the King, Lawler, and JBL, because they were talking. But all of a sudden, like I said, you hear the crowd getting really loud, so I'm thinking, oh, that's probably Ambrose. And, yeah, it is Ambrose. Ambrose attacks Rollins. He somehow, you know, got back in the arena. And then they get separated, but they keep on fighting. They keep on getting separated from the ones that are separating them. And, you know, Ambrose keeps on attacking Rollins. He even jumps on the, the announcer's table and from there jumps onto Seth Rollins and keeps punching him. Eventually, Triple H steps in and he's like, you know, enough of this shit. But he doesn't actually say that. But actually, Seth, I heard Seth Rollins in this segment say piece of shit. I, I'm pretty sure I heard him say piece of shit. Maybe I heard wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure... He, I heard him say that to Ambrose, but anyways, yeah, uh, Triple H steps in and basically tells security once again to, you know, get Ambrose out of the out of the arena, and he he's like pushing Ambrose, but Ambrose once again gets 
gets out of, you know, the, the security that's holding him. And once again, he attacks Rollins, but then they grab him. And then Rollins, he starts, you know, attacking Ambrose while everybody's holding Ambrose and keeping him from attacking Rollins. And Seth does that like two or three times until Ambrose finally gets escorted out. And then Triple H raises Rollins' hand. And that's it for that. After that, it was time for Chris Jericho versus Bray Wyatt. They show a video package first of the feud. As far as the match goes, they all got their signature spots in. You had Jericho going for the Lion Salt, but Bray Wyatt got his knees up. You had Bray Wyatt trying to go for his uh, for Sister Abigail, but Jericho countered that, and then he tried to go for the Walls of Jericho, which also Bray Wyatt got out of. And... Uh, J Bray Wyatt went for his, the move he does on the apron where he sets him up in like a DDT position, but instead hits him with a elbow on the back of the head onto the apron. And at some point there was like a slight botch where it looked like Jericho was going to go for a roll up on Bray, but they were kind of too close to the corner. So when he went to roll him up, Bray, you know, hit his head, the back of his head onto the bottom turnbuckle, the actual turnbuckle. But, in the end, uh, the end was actually not the winner, because I was expecting Jericho to win, and Jericho wins. But, uh, it just came out of nowhere, where Jericho was down, and then Bray Wyatt went to go pick up Jericho, and out of nowhere, Codebreaker, he covers Bray, and gets the three counts, wins the match. And then after that match, we see Seth Rollins in the parking lot, or heading towards the parking lot, and he's got two security guys next to him. And eventually he tells them, alright, you know, I don't need you guys, I'm fine, you can go. And then they go, but Sephiroth still, like, scans the place, like, looks over to make sure if Ambrose is there. And then he's looking over at one spot, and he, 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 he has his back turned to his car. And then we see from the trunk, the trunk of his car, Ambrose comes out of the trunk... And Ambrose has like a crowbar or something in his hands and he tries to hit Seth Rollins, but Seth Rollins sees him coming or, you know, hears him coming. So he gets out of the way, dodges it, uh, but Ambrose still, he goes after Rollins. Rollins just tries to run away, even tries to like climb up some spot, but Ambrose catches him and Ambrose just beats on Rollins some more. Eventually, Rollins just like pushes Ambrose away and he gets in his car and he runs off, leaves the arena. He didn't try to run over Ambrose or anything like that, like JBL did a couple years ago uh, to John Cena. But uh, yeah, that's it for that segment. And after that, it was time for the Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal. And this was a fun match to watch. I really did enjoy this match. And actually, they all made their entrance. Uh, there wasn't any superstars inside the ring and, you know, like two or three entrances. Every single superstar in the match actually had their own entrance. And uh, just to go over a few highlights of the match, you know, uh, who got eliminated by who. Uh, first two guys eliminated were Xavier Woods and Zack Ryder. Kali eliminated both of them. And actually, Kali, uh, when he was in the match or when the match begun, everybody went after Kali, but Kali, like, kind of pushed them all back. So he eliminates Woods and Ryder. And then Sheamus actually hits a bro kick on the great Kali. And then they all eliminate Kali together. And then we have like a cool stare down between Sheamus and Ryback. They fight it out. And eventually Sheamus gets the better of the fight and hits the bro kick on Ryback. Bro kicking him out of the ring. And then Dolph Ziggler, um, or actually Sheamus tries to eliminate The Miz. But The Miz gets out of it and Dolph hits the zigzag on The Miz. And then once he hits the zigzag on The Miz, The Miz rolls under the ring and he stays on the outside like that for most of the match, towards the end of the match. So you guys can kind of figure out what's going to happen. Anyways, um, you also get Bo Dallas eliminating Titus O'Neil when Titus O'Neil was taunting. He was doing his, you know, his barking taunt. Uh, Bo Dallas pretty much ran up to him and hit him with a knee to the back, eliminating him. And Kofi was really impressive in this battle royal where he, f he, d he had some pretty unique ways to stay in the match, especially involving Cesaro. At some point he went for like a sun sun sunset flip powerbomb on Cesaro to the outside or to eliminate Cesaro or something like that. But Cesaro grabbed onto the ropes and Kofi grabbed onto Cesaro while hanging, you know, hanging from basically Cesaro's legs. He was grabbing Cesaro's legs to, you know, not fall. And eventually he gets back in the ring. 
And then at some other point, it looked like Cesaro was going to eliminate him, but Cesaro had just eliminated Big E with a belly to belly. Uh, so when it looked like he was going to eliminate Kofi, Kofi actually lands on Big E in an electric chair position. And Big E helps him towards the ring, so he walks in towards the ring. And then Kofi gets back on the apron. Actually, no, he doesn't get on the apron. Cesaro, who is on the apron, he grabs Kofi while Kofi is still on Big E's shoulders and grabs him in a suplex position. But he kind of uh, flips over and back inside the ring. So Kofi and Cesaro are now back in the ring. But then eventually Cesaro suplexes Kofi out of the ring and gets him out, eliminates him. And also another cool spot, you had uh, Dolph kind of hanging on the second ropes. And Del Rio tried to go for the super kick. Del Rio was on the apron. He tried to go for the super kick on Dolph. Dolph ducked. And then he hit the DDT, the jumping DDT on Del Rio. But instead of Del Rio landing, you know, on the apron, um, or uh, on the mats, Del, uh, Dolph hit the DDT on the ropes. So what happened is Del Rio went, like, neck first onto the ropes when Dolph hit that jumping DDT, and then got eliminated. So that was also another cool spot. And in another surprise... He Slater actually eliminated Cesaro, and that actually happened, I believe, right after Cesaro eliminated uh, Kofi. He, out of nowhere, Heath Slater just came in and just threw Cesaro out of the ring. So, my prediction uh, as far as Cesaro winning uh, went, went right out the window with Heath Slater, you know, eliminating him. But then Slater got eliminated by Sheamus, I believe. And eventually, uh, it was down to Dolph Ziggler. And Sheamus, after Dolph eliminated Bo Dallas with a drop kick. Now keep in mind, the Miz is still on the outside outside of the ring. So Sheamus, Dolph, they fight it out, and I'm fully expecting Sheamus to eliminate Dolph. But actually, Dolph eliminated Sheamus. That was a pretty cool surprise. I like that. And he got the elimination when Sheamus was on the apron, and Sheamus decided to go for the uh, shoulder tackle. From the from the apron, what, what, what I think he's the, the battering ram. Yeah, that's what he calls it. He goes for the battering ram on Ziggler, but Ziggler catches him with a super kick and eliminates Sheamus. But then his music doesn't hit or anything like that because, of course, the Miz, you know, is still he he hasn't gotten eliminated yet. Dolph doesn't know that. And then all of a sudden, from behind, the Miz throws Ziggler over the top rope and gets the victory. The Miz is the new Intercontinental Champion. And then following that, it was time for the main events. The Fiddle 4 way match, John Cena versus Randy Orton versus Kane versus Roman Reigns. They show a video package beforehand. And then, you know, they make their entrance. Now, as far as the match goes, so... Uh, they all got their finishers in. There was a lot of finishers. Uh, I think John Cena actually hit the attitude adjustment on every single one of his opponents in the match. He hit it on Kane. He hit it on uh, Randy as well as Roman Reigns. Now, for the beginning of the match, Randy and Kane were on the same page. But eventually, Kane, I mean, Randy was on the outside and Kane and Reigns were on the inside. Kane hits a move on Reigns, I think it was a DDT, and then he goes for the cover on Reigns, Reigns kicks out, and when Randy gets back in the ring, he starts yelling at Kane because, you know, he went for the pin, he tried to get the win himself, and then he's yelling at Kane, he's pointing his finger at him, he's pushing him, so then Kane uppercuts Randy, and then Kane then starts punching Randy in the corner, and that's where really it stopped being like a two versus two match, or like Kane and Randy teaming up. Anyways, um, you also had Randy hitting a double DDT from the second rope on both John Cena and Reigns. He then went on the pin. He, he then went for the pin. Sorry, on one of them, but Kane interrupted that pin. And after that, you also had Reigns uh, hitting the Superman punch on John Cena, and he followed that up with a spear. But then it got broken up by, I think, Randy. By the way, speaking of Randy, he, he was actually, for the first time in, I don't know how many years, he was wearing uh, blue trunks. Because for, for the longest time now, he's been wearing, you know, the same black trunks. The only thing that changes is the color of the logos on it. But now it's actually black, uh, I mean, blue trunks. I don't know if it's going to be a regular thing or not. I know, it's not really important. I, I just noticed that because he's been wearing the same black chunks except for like i said the logos the color of the logos for for years now so what was i even saying now um oh yeah 
the cool spot in the match was Reigns had pretty much everybody down. Uh, he had Cena hanging on the ropes. He also had Kane hanging on the ropes. So what he did is he went for that kick on the outside where he runs and then it hits him with a kick to the head. He hit it on Cena first and then... Uh, Randy was on the outside. He was on the announcer's table. He was hanging on the announcer's table. So he then hits it on Randy as well on the announcer's table. And then he runs towards Kane and he hits it on Kane as well. And then I, I thought he was done there. But actually he goes back to Randy who's now like right in front of the barricade. And he hits a move that he hasn't done in a while. Actually he's done the move, the spear. But he hasn't speared anybody through the barricade in a while. So he actually did that to Randy. So that was pretty cool. You know, the last... I don't remember the last time he did it. He, he used to do it, like, in the beginning. I think the first two or three shield matches, he did the spear through the barricade. But he hasn't done it in a while. So it's pretty cool to see there. And in another big spot in the match, when Kane and Randy also started fighting, Kane had Randy on the top turnbuckle trying to go for a superplex. And then John Cena, both Cena and Reigns, got in the ring. And they grabbed... They each grabbed one of Kane's legs, and pretty much it was a power bomb into a suplex. So Kane, and so Reigns and Cena power bombing Kane while Kane hit the superplex on Randy. Right after they did that, Cena and Reigns had their stare down. It looked it looked like they were about to fight, but then in a, in a cool moment, Kane sat up, uh, and so both Cena, and this was like right after you know the big move. Uh, so both Cena and Reigns look at Kane, surprised that he sat up after that. So then they go ahead and attack Kane. And now for the ending sequence of the match, Kane was in charge, or, you know, he was in control. He actually, he actually hit a chokeslam on Reigns and Reigns kicked out. So then Kane decided to go for the tombstone on Reigns. He grabbed Reigns, put him up in position, but Reigns slipped out of it. And then he bounced off the ropes and hit a spear on Kane, but then Randy right away, he gets in the ring, and he hits an RKO on Reigns, Cena now gets back in the ring, and he grabs Orton, and hits him with the attitude adjustment on top of Kane, just like he did at Money in the Bank, and then covers Kane, gets a three count, wins the match, retains the championship. Uh, after the match, there was no Seth Rollins trying to cash in, I mean, he left the arena, you know, um, and there was no Brock Lesnar, unfortunately, coming out and hitting the F5 on Cena or, or anything like that. It was just Cena celebrating with the championship and then Cena leaving, uh, still as champion. So, what were the highlights of the show? For me, the biggest highlight was the opening matchup, the Usos versus the Wyatt family. That match was awesome. Not only was it... In my opinion, the best match between the Usos and the Wyatt family. But I think it was also the match of the night. The best match of Battleground 2014. The match itself was just full of highlights. I was I was really surprised when Eric Rowan kicked out of the top row of Splash. And I also loved Jey Uso stopping the Suicide Dive with a super kick. That was cool. Uh, the, the, the finishing spot was pretty cool too. I will say though, I did want... Eric Rowan and Luke Harper to win the match. I wanted the Wyatts to win the tag team titles. So I'm, I'm a bit disappointed in that. But regardless, regardless who wins the match, that was a great match. Also, the Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal, I thought that match was also full of highlights, which, you know, went over, like, Ziggler super kicking Sheamus out of the ring, eliminating him, and the jumping DDT from Ziggler onto um, Del Rio onto the top rope. And Kofi finding new unique ways to remain in the ring or, you know, stay out of elimination. Although, in the end, he did get eliminated. The biggest surprise for me in the match was Heath Slater eliminating Cesaro. It wasn't Dolph eliminating uh, Sheamus. It, it really was Heath Slater eliminating Cesaro. Like, who, who would have thought that would happen? I personally thought that Cesaro was going to win the match. But once he got eliminated, I wasn't surprised that The Miz won. Especially with him, you know, playing possum on the outside for most of the match. You knew he was going to come back in that ring eventually, probably towards the end. And I thought, alright, The Miz is either going to come out towards the end, eliminate the last guy and win. Or, if Sheamus is the last guy there, then maybe he tries to do that, but Sheamus sees it coming and eliminates him or hits him with a bro kick, something like that. But Dolph ended up being the last guy apart from... From the Miz and the Miz, you know, eliminates eliminates him, and you know maybe I would have preferred, you know, a different ending, but regardless, just like the Uso versus the Wyatt family match, 
you know, the match itself, I liked it. Uh, now, something else I noticed is, I think this is, this pay-per-view was the pay-per-view with the most amount of botches in, in, a, in a while. Like, I think I spotted a botch in most of the matches. Um, I think maybe the Usos versus the White family, there wasn't a botch, and Rusev versus Swagger, I don't think there was a botch there either, but the rest of the matches, I think they all had at least one botch or so. And then when it comes to Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins winning by forfeit, you know, I definitely would have liked to see Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. I was disappointed that we weren't getting the matchup. Uh, although I did enjoy seeing them, you know, fight it out uh, <laughs> in a couple of different segments, I still would have liked to see, you know, a match. I understand that this way they can have a rematch at SummerSlam without having Ambrose suffer like a pinfall loss to Seth Rollins because he's already lost so many matches on Raw and SmackDown and the ones he's he's won, he's won them by like disqualification. So I get that, you know, this way he doesn't necessarily lose like in a clean fashion, you know, he got screwed, but I still think, you know, they could have given Seth Rollins like the win via count out or maybe this qualification or something like that like actually have you know the match but you know a dq happens or a count out or maybe even you know kane interferes and helps Seth Rollins or something like that but like i said I, I did enjoy the segments with ambrose going after Seth Rollins, and then eventually Seth Rollins, you know uh leaves the building in his car and then as far as the main event goes um, I thought it was better than what I expected. I didn't expect the match to be all that great or anything. I thought it was a, you know, pretty decent match. I definitely didn't think it was a bad match. I mean, you know, the winner was obvious, but still, like I said, I thought it was a decent match. So, what was my overall thought about the show, my rating for the show? I would give Battleground a 6.5 on 10. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, can click that like button down below, I'd really appreciate it, and in the comments section, tell me what you thought was the match of the night, and give me your rating for Battleground 2014. With that said, I'm out guys, see ya.